Hi, I'm James Hamilton from Stomping Up's Woodworking Journal, and I'm going to show you how you can sharpen your own rotor bits. Rotor bits are expensive, so it's important to get the most out of every bit. Today I'll show you a couple of simple techniques that can make your bits last a lot longer. First, let's talk about cleaning your bits. As the crud builds up on the cutters, the bit begins to run hotter and dull faster. So what I like to do is spray my bits with a little bit of this cleaner. It's made by Trend, and the reason I like this particular brand is because it's extremely effective, yet it's still environmentally friendly. It's not a harsh chemical, so it's not gonna bother my skin. It's also pretty inexpensive compared to other cleaners that don't seem to work as well. Anyway, I let it sit for a few seconds, and then I wipe it and the crud off the rotor bit with a paper towel. I can use a toothbrush too if it's really caked on. The cleaner also works as a lubricant for the bearings, which is another reason why I like this stuff. Keeping your bits clean is important, but eventually they will become dull. But don't throw them out just yet. You can sharpen rotor bits several times. In fact, you can do most of that sharpening yourself. All you need is a credit card sized diamond hone like this one. Now you've probably seen these before, but I highly recommend that you get this particular kit. The reason why I like this kit, which also is from Trend, is because it's of extremely high quality and specifically designed for sharpening a bunch of different tools, which is probably why they call it the Complete Sharpeners Kit. I'll put a link to it in the notes below the video. And in the next several issues of Stumping Up's Woodworking Journal, we'll be showing you how to sharpen a number of different tools using the various hones and other things that come in it. But today I want to focus on this credit card sized hone. It's double sided. One is 300 grit, which is designed for heavier sharpening of high speed steel. And the other side is 600 grit, which is just right for our carbide router bits. So that's the side we're going to place facing up on the edge of our work surface. I'm going to squirt on a little bit of the lapping fluid that comes with the kit. This is important because we want the diamonds to cut efficiently throughout the entire process without clogging. Now, I'm going to let the hone hang off the edge of my work surface, and with my other hand, I lay the flat face of one of my router bit's cutters on the hone. We're only sharpening the flat surface, not the profiled edges, because we don't want to change the shape of our cutter. I'm applying a small amount of pressure just to keep it stable, and I stroke back and forth 10 times. Then I switch to the other cutter and repeat the same 10 back and forth strokes. That's it. We're done. This bit will cut just like new again. Now let me tell you why it was that easy. First of all, the diamond hone itself is thick. That's very important because you don't want it to flex while you're working with it on the edge of the surface. I see a lot of cheap hones in stores that just aren't going to work because they have to make them thinner so they can sell them for less. And using a credit card sized hone rather than one of these little hones with the plastic handle makes it a lot easier to keep everything stable and to sharpen evenly. Another key was the number of strokes. 10 seems to be perfect because it removes just enough material to refresh the edge, but not so much that it isn't repeatable on both cutters. If you were to take 40 or 50 strokes, any variation of the length of the stroke or the amount of downward force that you apply would start to add up. Maybe not the first sharpening, but over two or three sharpenings, you may start to remove more material from one cutter than the other. You don't want that. So stick to 10 back and forth motions per cutter. A third key is the grit of the hone you use. Diamond sharpening expert James Berry says that 600 grit is ideal for carbide because it produces an edge that is as sharp as you can get without leaving it brittle. 1000 grit leaves too fine an edge on carbide and it will break off quickly, which is just going to leave your router bit more dull than when you started. That's why I like the 300-600 grit hone. A fourth key is to sharpen your bits before they become very dull. If the edges are too rounded over, 10 strokes aren't going to be enough. And then we're back to the possibility of uneven sharpening. So you have to keep your router bits well maintained. If you're working on a big project and using one of your bits a lot, just touch it up before you put it back in the rack and it'll be ready for the next time. Finally, there is a limit to how many times you can hand sharpen a router bit. After four or five times, those variations we talked about may begin to add up. So you'll want to send it out to a proper sharpening service then. But by using one of these kits to sharpen yourself, you can dramatically extend the time between professional sharpings and the life of your router bit overall. Beginning in November 
2016. We'll be showing you how to sharpen a different tool in each of the next five issues of Stumping Up's Woodworking Journal. So be sure to visit our website and subscribe. It's free and we never send you any junk mail. Besides, you'll find all sorts of ways to improve your woodworking shop and skills in every issue. Happy honing.